So hello everyone, welcome back to another episode here. Uh, if the, you can hear some background noise, it's the rain outside, it's monsoon season here so it's raining quite a bit outside, uh, quite heavy. So today uh, you are again with me, your friendly public health specialist JJ, and I'm going to be talking about a follow-on from my previous video which was uh, about cancer. So I'm going to talk about how to decrease your cancer risk. Cancer is an important topic because most people know someone who has had cancer uh, or they have had it themselves and I, it's become really a very important uh, disease. It's also a disease of the 20th century. It didn't exist uh, a few hundred years ago and it, it kind of increased together with the mechanization and the um, factorization of the food supply. So the increase in processed products, the increase in, in GMOs, the increase in population, the increase in environmental effects around us, so using more toxins in everyday life around us, for example in, in the bulb, bulb lights, in paint, in anti-inflammatory coatings and linings, in the fumes that are sprayed everywhere, the pesticides, insecticides, nemicides, all of these bacteria sides that are used, the degradation in the soil, the air pollution, the water pollution, the additives that they add to the water to purify it, the chlorides and the all of the things, fluorides that they add to the water and to the air. So it's a combination of all of these things, the deforestation, the lack of exercise, the lack of uh, water that's being drunk, the increase in sugar intake, processed sugar intake, salt intake, fat intake, and then man-made products like trans fat. So things that are not known by our bodies, that are not recognized and that can harm our bodies. So these are all things that we need to look out for and that have increased and have led to, uh, combined, they've led to an increase in cancer risk, in cancer rates and in cancer prevalence. So you have a higher chance of getting cancer or getting a disease if someone in your family has had it, especially in the direct parental line. <clears throat> But <clears throat> these genes that are passed down can be switched on or they can be switched off. So if you have the gene, you can either switch it on or you can switch it off. So for example, if you have the gene that predisposes you to breast cancer, for example, your environment, your nutrition will determine if you are going to switch it on or switch it off. So generally, if you then follow uh the lifestyle that is generally followed you have a high dairy intake high animal protein and animal fat intake high processed sugar intake high salt intake that will elevate your risk and that will switch on the genes if you follow a plant more plant-based lifestyle fresh vegetables fresh fruit you include smoothies and juices and pulses and legumes and beans and nuts and seeds and sprouts and all of these wonderful things that we find in nature then you will switch that off and you will switch your healthy disease-free genes you'll switch those on and for more on these you can look at uh, I've got a list here of different doctors that you can look at so there's a doctor group dr. Hyman dr. William Lee uh, herbalist herbalist Patrick Delves dr. Gregor there's a Barbara O'Neill Dr. Clapper, Dr. Neil Barnard, and the Physicians Committee doing wonderful work. You can look at the, their website, PCM, or the Physicians Committee. They have a lot of information. They have a lot of studies that's on there, and they give uh, a lot of information as well. Then there are also your, your plant-based groups that you can look, look out for as well. And there are quite a few people around that follow the plant-based lifestyle. You can also look at regenerative agriculture. They are also 
looking at regenerating the soil so that more nutrients can go into the plants so that the plants can then make us in turn healthier. So I'm going to talk about uh, eight things that are essential for good health and that can decrease or reduce your risk for cancer. So as I spoke about in my previous video, the cancer, a cancer cell is a cell that has malfunctioned or that has been damaged or that has been harmed and it's replicating forming then a mass and then it takes up the different functions and different things and it harms your body it will take up the nutrients it will stop blood flow it will cause damage when it grows bigger because it will block off blood flow and oxygenation and nutrient nutrientization of your other organs it will take the nutrients it will take the oxygen and the blood flow and it will take everything so it's it is dangerous and it's something that we need to look out for but it can be prevented and you can also treat it once you have it with uh, a more God-given natural way for using herbs, using plants, using the things that are out there for us. If you really go and do research, there is a, a plant or a fruit or a nut or some natural product for each and every disease. There's something that can treat all of them so if you just look into mushrooms there's a, a mushroom that can treat any and all of the different um, cancers I gave a list in my previous video as well where you get the specific mushroom that targets specific cells so herbs and plants are balancing and mild they work together with your body. They don't force themselves to be absorbed. They don't force themselves into your body. So if you're eating plants, some of it will be absorbed. Some of it will be discarded. Some of it you'll take up. Some of it will be released. But when you take, a, for example, a multivitamin, everything wants to be taken up. If you're taking medication, everything wants to be taken. That's why there's a dangerous max limit. But with a natural product, there's usually not a, a, a limit, a safe limit. You can have as much as you want. So fruit, you can eat as much fruit as you want. You cannot overdose on fruit. Your body will naturally tell you, okay, I'm full. I cannot have any more. You can only eat that much. Then your body will digest it. It will, is easy to digest and it can start again. Although there are minimal amounts of protein and fat in fruit, when you are eating a lot of it at a time or in a day, then you are getting enough protein and fats and minerals and vitamins as well and there are people out there who are fruitarian and which are they are thriving and healthy and you can look out for those as well so i'm going to go into these eight so just quickly touch back on the herbs and the plants they are more mild on your body as I said, and they are, um, they don't have side effects as medication has. If you choose to go the medication route, then plants can help to reduce the side effects again as well. So there's a dual benefit. You can still have the treatment and you can follow a plant-based lifestyle, which will bring down your side effect risk and will increase the potency of the treatment and help you to heal better because you're putting your body in the position to heal it doesn't have to fight against everything that you're putting in. If you think of nutrition, which is the first part in reducing the risk, is that you're doing it three or four times a day. Usually people eat three times a day and then they do things in between as well. So everything that you eat, everything that you drink, everything that passes into your mouth is either helping you to heal or pushing you towards a disease, if you think of it that way. It puts a lot of stress and a lot of um, a lot of weight on it but that's how it is we need to to take control of what we are putting in we have the power we choose what we are putting in so and what with what we put in we are either promoting health or we are paving our way to disease there's kind of just those two options so it does seem very doom and gloom but uh, you have so many options that give you health. There are thousands of fruit, thousands of vegetables that you can have. And we are generally choosing three or four animals. 
where you have thousands and thousands of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and the variety is almost endless and people keep choosing the three or four animals and their byproducts and that is one of the big causes of disease that's a driver of disease and it also becomes a problem because all of the big companies and businesses will push in this direction so if you think of of um, food it's really processed food packaged food it's really controlled by a handful of companies there are only a few companies that control everything it's the same in agriculture there are a few less than five companies that control all the seeds that control the pesticides that control the fertilizers all of these things are controlled by just a few companies and you see now with with the um, what's happening in Russia and Ukraine where the fertilizers are a problem the wheat is a problem all of these things become a problem because it's mainly just a few companies a handful of companies that control uh, everything and then you are being pushed in a certain direction to support all of these companies it's the same in the in the health sphere where the pharmaceutical companies are the main drivers in which direction you will be going and what you are going to be putting into your body because that's what's available that's what's been told that's what's been pushed um, onto us all the time so i'm not promoting one thing over the other i'm just informing you of what is happening so the pharmaceutical companies control governments uh, they are that powerful you we've seen in the pandemic how the pharmaceutical companies can control the public health information that's available and how it's been limited as well how information scientific information is being shot down and being gagged and being stopped from put out there so do the research for yourself look look around find information that's what i've been doing you have to look for yourself because the things that you are being given are screened and are filtered and it's a specific narrative that's pushing you just in one direction where there is another direction so nutrition is important because that's what you are putting in and prevention is always better than cure it's better to prevent something that then want to treat it or to 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 cure it after it's already there so prevention is always the best look out for toxins in your house and things that you are putting in most of the medications around the world and what we are taking come originally from plants so for example the pain medication the aspirin paracetamol comes from the white willow bark for example so originally things come from plants and they have been taken and put into drugs or medication and they have a lot of side effects they can be addictive and they harm your body more than they help your body where the natural plant product is not as harmful so nutrition is especially important because you are putting it in many times a day so if you think about it you are eating three or four times a day you are drinking water constantly you're breathing you cannot go without breathing for five or six minutes so that's also extremely important exercise Exercise is another one because it's pushing everything around your body. It's circulating it. It's oxygenating. Uh, cancers cannot survive in an alkaline, oxygen-rich environment. So oxygenation is important. Um, having the, the pH balance. And remember, you have a pH balance inside of your cell and outside of your cell. Intracellular pH, extracellular pH. Intracellular pH, blood pH. Those cannot change because you will die with a fraction of a change extracellular pH can fluctuate so that's the one that you need to look out for so that it is in the disease fighting range and not in the disease forming range so you want to eliminate toxins exercise does this you need more than 30 minutes a day you need to raise your your blood pressure so your blood is pumping your you are breathing in oxygen and preferably you need to be somewhere where there's fresh air in a forest or in nature somewhere it can move your lymphatic system your lymph is getting rid of all your waste products you need to move your body move your blood move your oxygen move the fluids around get the lymphatic fluid to move so that you can get rid of the toxins and the 
the dead unhealthy cells to facilitate healing. So nutrition, exercise, then water. Water cleanses, water hydrates, it gives you oxygen into your body, it balances out the pH, it promotes cellular repair. It's what makes your blood flow, it what's, it's the carrier for all the nutrients and for all the minerals that goes around your body. The biggest cause of headache is dehydration. The biggest cause of wrinkles and skin problems, dehydration. So hydrates, lots and lots of water, fluid. If you are not retaining a lot of it, you can add some fruit to your water, lemon juice, you can add chia seeds just to hold it, hold the water in, in your body a little bit longer. If you find that you are just peeing it out, add something to the water to facilitate it being held in your body. Then sunlight. Sunlight is anti-inflammatory. It kills viruses, bacteria, mold, disease. It's one of the best uh, disease fighters that you have. It kills bacteria. So sunlight, sun exposure. It balances your immunity as well because it's giving you uh, melatonin. So N, nutrition, exercise, water, sun. Then temperance, balance. Balance in all things. Too much of a good thing can be bad as well. So you want to have a balance in everything, balanced eating, balanced drinking, balanced exercise, balanced water, because you can skew it too little or too much. You want it a middle, you want a balance. You don't want too much, you don't want too little. So balances in everything is important. Then you want fresh air, because our air is so polluted these days, we want fresh air. So gardens are important. House plants, have house plants in your house. <laughs> to clean your air. It's been found that having houseplants can decrease your stress, can improve the quality of your air, can improve the quality of your sleep as well. And that makes us healthier and happier people. So houseplants can cleanse your air in your house. It can also provide you food if you're growing the correct amount of plants. And forests clean our air as well. It brings us water, it, it balances out nature. So forests are uh, where the fresh air started, where rainfall starts as well. Forests drive rainfall. More forests, more rainfall. So we want to plant trees as well. You want as many trees as you can. Then rest. Rest is also important. Sleep. You have your lymphatic system, you have a glymphatic system in your brain. Your brain also needs to be cleaned out and cleansed and renewed and refreshed. You need to store and work through everything that happened in your day. You need to restore and rest your body so repair can happen. So you can also eliminate waste. You can store your memories. You can look and assess where your body needs to work, where it needs to rest, where it needs to repair, where it needs to build, what it needs to break down. So it's a time of of repair and consultation with your body when you are sleeping. And it protects you as well. It reduces stress when you sleep properly. It refreshes your body and gives you energy for a new day. Then religion is very, very important as well. Time with God. So it, it gives you a goal. It gives you a purpose. It gives you something to believe in. It drives you into a positive frame of mind it gives you happiness contentment it gives you a purpose which decreases your strength your stress i mean stress is a big driver of disease as well and religion believing in something believing in god reduces your stress increases your happiness gives you a goal a purpose a faith a certain peace of mind and that helps you to decrease your stress and go into life not worrying about so many things so if you look at these acronyms, NEW START, so nutrition, exercise, water, NEW, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, trust, START, NEW START. So if you look at these core principles, then they can prevent and reduce your risk for disease in general, but especially your cancer risk. And then if you include the little other things, trying to grow your own food, trying to to get things as fresh as possible and eat them as fresh as possible. Having a lot of water, having lots of fresh air. So if you add all of these things into your environment, you will become a happier, healthier, more content person with a lower disease risk. If you look at research out there and you look at the so-called blue zones, they all have these things in common. 
they follow mostly vegetarian or plant-based lifestyle they and if they have an animal in their diet it's as fresh as possible it's as healthy as possible and it's as disease free and heavy metal toxin free as possible for example if you look at the people from japan okinawa they include animals for example fish in their diet but it's as fresh as possible it's deep sea and it does not have all of the heavy metal toxins we didn't in the past <laughs> so those are some of the key things exercise community trust in god all of these things work together for your health so look at these if you need some more pointers pop them down below if you do other things as well tell me in the comments and as always to god be the glory and stay healthy